Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released macOS Sequoia 15.3. macOS 15.3 Sequoia is available around the world at the same time for everyone, as long as you're on a macOS 15 supported device. This particular update came in at 2.54 gigabytes on my 16 inch MacBook Pro M4 Max, and this released alongside many other updates with iOS 18.3, watchOS 11.3, updates for tvOS, HomePod OS, VisionOS, and older iPad versions as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go up to the Apple, go to about this Mac. And as you can see here, it says Mac OS Sequoia 15.3. If we click on it, we can see the build number of 24D60. This just lets you know you're on the latest build that's available to the public. Now, as far as the first new feature, well, the first thing has to do with Apple intelligence. If we go into our system settings under system settings, go to Apple intelligence. As long as you have an M one or newer Mac, you'll have the option for Apple intelligence, depending on the country you live in. So you can see this here. It will actually automatically enable it. If available in your country, there won't be any more waiting and you'll be able to use it right away. It is coming a little bit later around the world and you can see that on Apple's website and on the Apple intelligence website. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, we'll zoom in here just a little bit at the bottom and you'll see it says languages supported in 2025 include Chinese English within India and Singapore, French, German, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Portuguese, Spanish, and Vietnamese. So these will be coming out a little bit later. They don't specify a month, but some have hinted around maybe the next release. So we'll look for that when it comes out. Now, as far as anything else that's new, well, under Apple intelligence, we have a new feature, at least on the Mac side, we actually have gen emoji now. So if we go into messages, you can see within messages, if we click our icon for emoji, we now have the gen emoji option. So you'll see they've added it. You'll get this new splash screen, letting you know it's in beta and how it actually works. So we'll click continue and then we can describe something, maybe a hat on a mouse with a smile and we'll see what it comes up with. So we'll give it a second. It will create this and it's got a mouse with a mouse. So that's a little creepy actually, but you have the option to create whatever you'd like. So you can use this just like you can on the iPhone if you have it supported in your country, and then you can add it to any message here. Another feature that goes along with Apple intelligence has to do with notifications. They've changed this a little bit, just like they did on the iPhone with iOS 18.3. And we now have summarized notifications, but with some updates. They're now updated where they may contain errors. It's letting you know this. And if you do have updates that are summarized, it will actually emphasize them with italics. So if we go into our notifications within our notifications, I currently don't have any, but you can see what it looks like here on the iPhone where it's in italics or on the iPad. So either way, it will show across all of the devices in the exact same way. Something else to go along with this actually has to do with notification summaries that they've removed from specific types of apps for now. They've removed them specifically from news and entertainment apps, and they'll be back a little bit later. So that's due to some of the errors that they mentioned here. We'll hopefully see that maybe in the next update where they'll come back to different devices. So maybe we'll have that on the iPhone with news, entertainment, and more once it can verify that it's more accurate. There's another change here as well. If we go into the calculator app, so I'll find that here calculator within calculator, just like in iOS 18.3, if we do something such as eight times two click equals, we can keep clicking equals for it to continue to multiply or add or subtract or whatever you're using this for. So just like we've had in prior versions, we now have this here with iOS 18.3 on the iPad, Apple watch and Mac now as well, for whatever reason, it wasn't here at the beginning of the introduction of Mac OS 15. Now, if we go back into Safari, something they've actually fixed, but not commented on specifically themselves has to do with when you have multiple windows and you're actually snapping those to different areas. So maybe we'll use this on the left side here. Let's zoom out and then maybe we'll open a new one. We'll go to Apple here and within Apple, we'll drag this out and maybe snap this to the right side. So we'll bring this out bring it to the right. There was an error before where this would just jump around and not work properly. Now, if you actually used the commands on the keyboard, command T or command N, you could actually open it that way and they would snap like they would before, but for whatever reason it wasn't working and they've since resolved this in this update. So you can drag this out again and snap it to wherever you'd like.
Apple has not mentioned any additional bug fixes, but so far it seems to be fairly stable and usable. However, there are a lot of security updates in this version, so let's go to Apple's security website. So on the Apple security release website, if we scroll down, you can see here that we have macOS Sequoia 15.3, and then we can go through all of the different updates. Everything from AirPlay, a few different fixes there, quite a few. If we continue down, you'll see Apple mobile file integrity, many more and they're all alphabetized facetime icloud the kernel launch services and many more messages passwords safari and as we keep continuing down you'll see tv app webkit and on and on and so lots of things that have been fixed this time around as far as security and you can read these by going into maybe core audio here where it says parsing a file may lead to an unexpected app termination and the description or the fix was the issue was addressed with improved checks and you'll see that google threat analysis group actually hinted to them that they may need to fix this. So you'll have the CVE number here and more. So lots of different information here. And if you're wondering if you should install Mac OS 15.3, well, this is a good reason to right away. There's lots of different bug fixes and I've been using it on this device for a day without any issues whatsoever. As far as overall performance, like I mentioned before, I've had no issues. Even on the previous version, I didn't have a whole lot of issues. I used this while I was traveling to both CES and Samsung Unpacked, used it to edit videos, used it to create different thumbnails and everything else without any issues whatsoever. It's been fairly stable. However, it will take a week or so to know if this version is as stable as the previous one. When it comes to the battery life, well, since this is a MacBook, it's actually been doing quite well. You'll see I'm currently at 91%. It's using ScreenFlow to record the screen. And if we take a look at battery, give it a second to load here. Under battery, you'll see battery. We're currently on battery under high power. So I use it high power to edit. And you'll see battery health is currently at 100%. Typically I can edit about two or three videos before going through battery and that's about a 10 to 15 minute video. It takes a few hours and then I'll upload the video, do the thumbnail and more and it lasts just fine. So it's actually been doing quite well. You'll see where it was used the most on Tuesday and Wednesday, of course, with regular updates and it's holding out just fine. It was last charged today, early in the morning, and that was it. It seems to have great standby as well. As far as storage, well, let's go into general and then we'll go to storage and you can see this is actually using 6.45 terabytes of eight terabytes. That's typically because I need to clean out some files from Final Cut Pro and I can optimize this more with Apple TV or the TV app. But in general, it seems to be doing okay. And you'll see Mac OS takes up a tremendous amount of space though. Apple intelligence is just 5.04 gigabytes of it. So quite a bit of space taken up, but 20.09 gigabytes system data goes up and down. So I don't typically look at that too much. That's sort of why it's buried at the bottom. Now, as far as the next update, if we go and take a look at the calendar, typically this time of year, I would expect iOS 18.4 beta one along with Mac OS 15.4 beta one and all the other ones that go along with that as soon as tomorrow. We could see it this week or maybe sometime early next week, but usually we'll have the next betas with additional features that we've been waiting for with Apple intelligence, maybe some things we've been promised since the beginning of iOS 18 and many other things, or maybe a few surprises here and there as well. So look for that. And of course, I'll let you know as soon as it's released. As far as anything else though, at this point, we're just waiting for Mac OS 16, iOS 19 to be shown typically in the first or second week of June. So that's when we can expect that. And as far as anything else, well, it seems to be a fairly decent update, but not a huge update, which is expected at this time of year. Let me know if you've found anything else though in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper, at least the iPhone version in the description, like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.